Kong. I'm thrilled to be here today. I'm here to talk to you today about your technology, the technology that powers shop.com, unfranchise.com, motivescosmetics.com, TLS, isotonics.com, right? So it's about our technology and business insights of how we run our technology. The thing I want you to understand is we have a very large scalable platform that powers all our sites. It's cutting edge. It, it, it powers what your customers use. It powers on franchise to help your business partners. I'm going to just touch on this. I'm not going to get into the details here of all of these uh, technologies. This is our technology stack. All right, you've got Couchbase, SQL, Elasticsearch. We use RESTful services. And again, I could go into the details, and I'm not going to. But it's important to understand we have a cutting edge system. The other thing that I want you to know is that we have over 300 engineers, developers, security specialists, data scientists, quality assurance, business analysts, architects, DevOps teams, release. All of these groups builds the software and systems. I'm going to take you through a little bit of the, our infrastructure. First of all, I want you to understand that we have the best in class security network and infrastructure. We're very, we take security very, very seriously. So that's the founding building blocks of our system. The next thing we do is we have a caching infrastructure. So what is caching? Caching is putting pages, data into memory. Why do we do this? The reason we do this is because it makes the sites and the systems much, much faster. Because it's much easier to pull the information out of a memory than it is to go all the way back to a server. Beneath that, we have our servers, our infrastructure. We have our Java servers that help power shop.com and unfranchise and Java code, lots of Java code. And then we have a sure, secure connection to our data tier. So we have it firewalled off and locked away so for our databases. Then we have a thing called an API layer. Now it's important to understand that what an API is, without getting into the details, our API layer has one system talking to another system. So internally, we use this so our systems can communicate. But we also use this externally to talk to credit card providers and, and all the different partners that we use. Associated with that, we have our Elasticsearch and um, our Lucene, which is, supports our search, and that's where APIs are. So that just kind of brought, paints a broad picture of the infrastructure. But the reason this is important is because there's a lot of systems and services, and it is mission critical for you for your business partners and for your customers that we have a fast, reliable, and scalable system. Millions of page views, which I'll get to in a little bit, and millions of customers monthly hit our systems. So I'm going to give you a, a little view into um, kind of my dashboard, right? what I like to look at. I, we have many monitoring tools, but this is one that I like to look at. This shows you that we have over 900 systems and servers that we monitor. And I can tell you at any one time how many are up, how many are having, you know, who are working well, if there's an issue. And there's a lot of redundancy, right? So that we keep our system up, as, you know, all the time. 53 million page views monthly on average, and over 4 million visitors monthly. Okay, that's not total customers, I mean, or, or total. Yeah, about customers and so forth. That is just a monthly view. But even more impressive is the number of services. Remember I talked about APIs, okay, for those who were here earlier. Uh, we talked about APIs, 
And so a lot of these are, are services that we talk to our internal systems and third parties. There's over 18,000 of these that we have that we measure and monitor all the time. And if there's a problem, I get a page right here, right? So if I know what's going on on my phone. All right. So even more impressive, I think, is that even within the systems, we measure and monitor all aspects of a system. Okay, we measure everything. And the reason we do this is if you don't measure it, it won't improve. <laughs> we also take all that real-time data and we mash it all up into a big data analysis and we look at application performance. Why is this important to you? It's important to you because we want to make sure that as we release new features and new code, that we're making the system as fast as possible. So we watch this all the time. We meet and we review and we make sure that the systems are running fast enough because we release code all the time, as you know. We do measurements on web analysis like Google and, and Adobe and we, we see how many visitors are, how long they've spent on the site, um, if, they, you know, if they've dropped off. We also visualize and measure all our social media channels, Instagram, Facebook, all of things, where are the volumes coming from, how many likes, our demographics, all that information. And we use all of this data to help give us more information and to help serve our customers better. Here's another thing. So we've talked about all of the things that I can control in our data centers and in the cloud, but what about it leaves that and goes over to the customer's browser. I can't control that. I can a little bit. So we work with companies such as Akamai, who has literally over 200,000 servers in 190 countries. And we work with them to monitor the fastest path through the internet. And if there's a problem with the internet in one area, we'll reroute traffic so that the page load is as fast as possible. So that's one thing we do um, because it's important to get the page up as fast as possible to the customer. The other thing we do is we work again with other companies and we will push a lot of our content to a server that's very close. In fact, I was looking this morning uh, and found out there are 15 servers within a couple kilometers of this very location, right, that we push a lot of content to, images and, you know, information like that. So why? Because when a page load is occurring, it's, it's pulling it locally. All right. There's another thing we do. <laughs> it goes on. So, for example, what if you're on a mobile and it's a bad speed. I can't control that. Well, we do. We will adjust the content we're pushing to the web page based on the speed of your connection. And, the, and we also allow, will load certain graphics to certain browsers to help speed up the performance. You see, all of this is here to make it the best customer experience for you and your customers, your, your, your business partners. So, and I keep talking customer, customer, right? So one of the things that we also measure, and this isn't really technology, this is our business process, but we do this, and it's called voice of the customer. And you may say, well, what is this voice of the customer? It is the process of capturing what the customer wants. Uh, we want to make sure that we give the customer a great quality experience. And, you know, we, we have a, a saying of delighting the customer. We want to delight the customer, okay? So we want to understand what it is that they want. And how do we do this? We do this through digital intelligence. What that means is we capture and analyze what's happening on our websites. Sometimes we're lucky and customers give us feedback, right? We have feedback forms throughout our website and people will post in information. But a lot of times we don't get that. So we watch what is happening with the customer and 
we use that to actually optimize our business processes and we make business decisions based on this to improve our websites. So I'm going to give you like the roadmap of how we do this. First of all, we use big data. You know, I showed you all that monitoring information and so forth. We pull all that information in and we analyze the issues or if there's a problem or if something's working well and we look at that. The next thing we do is we alert and monitor. Now, alerts are easy if a server's having problems, but what if a customer is stuck in checkout? Or what if a customer is having trouble finding something and they keep clicking around? We have alerts and processes for that as well, right? So we see what is going on on the site and we get alerted if there's a problem. Because sometimes we release new features and it just didn't work, <laughs> so we're always improving. And we also look at the feedback from our customers. So we analyze what's working, we have monitors and analytics, we study what's happening here. Then we also quantify it. Is it happening to a region? Is it happening due to a new feature? Is it happening only to one or two customers and why? So that helps us understand priority. Then we work to resolve it. Again, sometimes we resolve it through, through technology and other times we resolve it by fixing the user interface so it's easier to use and that's delighting the customer. So one of the tools we have is this, like a customer feedback form, okay? So this is information that people have submitted to us. The nice thing about this is I can, with one click, I can see the entire path that they traveled on our website. Now, this doesn't have personal information in it, you know, but it, what it does is it shows a broad picture, a broad picture of what they've done on the website. And I can see the steps. And then I can even play them back like a DVR. Where I can play back the whole path to see what happened, why they had trouble. So this is kind of analytics we have. Now, wouldn't it be great if you could have analytics? You know, it would be. And you can. And I don't know how many of you know this, but you actually have Google Analytics for all of your websites for your shop.com, for your isotonics, for your TLS, for your motives, everything. So wouldn't it be great if you could see what was going on, how many customers were on? Wouldn't it be wonderful to know the age, where they came from, gender, where the traffic's coming from, the devices that they used, right? See if you have like a blog or something or social media posts. Is that working? Are people clicking from that and coming to your website, to your shop.com portal? You can tell by this. And this has costs no money to you. This is part of your unfranchise. You can find performance, most viewed pages. If, you've, if you're trying to you know, push somebody to a certain product page, is that working? The time they spent, your conversion. Did they convert from looking to buying? And all you do is you go to my account, my services, and the web admin. It's there today. You click an action there as far as editing your portal. And on the page, there's a Google Analytics section. Now, you do have to go to Google Analytics <laughs> and sign up. Can't do that for you, that's a good thing. You could go sign up, they'll give you an ID. You put that ID here, that's your tracking ID, and there you have it, and you'll start looking. And the great thing is, is Google has this for Android and iPhone, and you can take it on the go and look anywhere. So I'm gonna change into shopping annuity strategy, and I think it's important um, to talk about this because you know about the shopping annuity and some of the things that we're doing from a technology side I want you to understand that we're focusing on matching versus searching and what I mean by that is you can still go to shop.com and search and your customers can but what we want to do is understand what the customer wants and needs and instead of just giving results back we want to match products, the best products, the best prices to the customer.
So, you know the shopping annuity assessment. I'm sure you've all filled this out. And as you go through this, you'll have events, birthdays, special occasions, right? And you have a graph at the bottom that shows your you know, projected savings and earnings and commissions, right? So, we want to understand the customer, you and your customers. So we use the shopping annuity assessment data. We look at what customers are doing on Moda's Cosmetics and shop.com and TLS. And we look at purchasing behaviors and we pull in the web analytics, right? We also look at third party data, um, brands and products and market trends and so forth. And we mash that data together. So you have the customers over here, right? So what they're doing on the site. And then we have the merchants and the products, the hottest products, um, shipping options, best prices, best bundles. And so we have that side of the merchants and product side. And so this is the, the process that we have, the strategy of matching versus searching. You could take any product category, such as shoes, dresses, groceries, right? And you have the shopping assessment data, what the customers are doing, third party information. And we, based on birthdays and special events, we'll alert you and your customers saying, hey, this is a, you know, we, we found products for you because we know an event's coming up. And we narrow that and we match the products. And the idea here is to make it fast and easy. It's order and get versus searching. So I'm going to have a little bit of fun right here. So I was talking to my search team, uh, data scientists and so forth that help build all of this. And we were talking about um, how, they, how we do this, right? So if you think about a, a shopping mall or you know, a grocery store or a shoe store, if you like one type of apparel, you may like another type of, you know, like shoe. If you like, uh, you know, what, some certain types of electronics, right, you'll like another type. So we, what we do is we, we look at what people are doing on our site, and all, again, all this data, and we try to make sure that we can match groups of people with groups of products, right? So I was talking to them, I said, what's the way that to do this? And they said, oh, well, we, have, we can show you the, you know, show the formulas. I said, we're not showing formulas, right? And they said, no, but it really explains it. Well, I'm like, we're not showing formulas. And then I was looking at the formulas. And you got to remember, I work with this stuff every day. I don't understand the formulas. And I was like, how can I tell a room full of people through translation about formulas? But I thought I'd do it anyway. So that's the formula. What we do <laughs> is we define neighborhoods of of connections, of products and people. And that's the first thing. That's we, this is how we define the neighborhoods. Then we take that information and we group products together. And I'm not joking, you can take a picture and look it up later. It's called, the official name of this is called local clustering coefficient for undirected graphs. And that's the formula. <laughs> so I had fun here with this, but I want you to understand that what we do is we look at our customers and we want to group products for them to match them, the best brands and the best products. So we have relationships with merchants, obviously, because you'll hear a Mark talk about this in a little bit. And we have great prices and we, we understand shipping options. So what our goal is to make it a way to order and get versus searching. One thing I want to leave you with, our technology is always evolving, and we are staying on the cutting edge all the time. Wouldn't it be great if you could take a product, place Managing it and maintaining a healthy lifestyle is important. on a Let tray. Let TLS help you on your way to achieving your health and weight loss. Thank you. Um, yes, I added audio to this. Uh, so, but take a product, and all around you, 360 degrees is product information, videos, brochures, all that information that you could look in a virtual world. 
This is not science fiction. <laughs> this is a demo, uh, of actually a beta that we're working on right now. Um, you can add to cart and check out right on the site. Uh, so I want you to know that with Market Hong Kong, our technology, the possibilities are endless. Thank you.